think that's one of the 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 chief values of self determination theory is that what it's it ties back to you know independent of of you know the self determination piece is that the the model predicts effectively when the well being consequences are negative you're going to have certain problems you know you're going to you're going to run into to challenges and I, and I think that's the key piece is is the feedback in a Sudbury school is going to be the the well-being consequences that are not consciously processed, but is going to be, oh, okay, this is the thing I'm interested in. This is where I get my support for autonomy or relatedness or competence or whatever it is. But what the mainstream schools do is they they cut kids off from that feedback because of the control that's exerted. And and but if if there are some kids, there's probably 20, 30 percent of the kids in schools who are like, oh, I trust this person. I, you know, I, I'm going to do something they, they want me to do. And they find ways to get their needs met, satisfied in that in that context. But because that's such a, a rare event, <laughs> the problem is, is there may be kids for whom that system works well, but one, they're not a majority. And two, why, why can't we create a system that actually is attuned to the well-being consequences, not just the you know, arbitrary bookkeeping that we use for academics. This is the Agentic Schools Vodcast, where you will learn about schools from around the world where children's agency to make decisions about their learning and living is more important than their academic skills. What makes education possible? is the satisfaction of psychological needs. So that is what these schools have in common with all others. What makes a school agentic is satisfying those needs particularly well. I'm your host, Don Burr.